Okay, so good day everyone. Welcome to Prefinals. This is your blood and tissue nematodes. So let us start with a case. Presenting to you a case of a 32-year-old female homemaker presented to the OPD with complaints of a painless swelling over the lateral aspect of her left upper arm for 5 months. There was no antecedent history of injury or trauma. There was no history of similar swelling elsewhere in the body or of constitutional symptoms associated. At examination, there was a 2 by 2.5 cm non-tender immobile swelling, which was firm in consistency and, and adherent to the skin. It was not warm to touch. There were 2 to 3 lymph nodes non-tender in the left axilla. The systematic examination was normal. Hematological investigations were completely normal. So a, a final aspiration cytology was done and they aspirated around 0.3 ml of clear fluid. The smear showed presence of thin, slender, colorless, thread-like larvae with blunt head and tail tip free of nuclei. And they were identified which raised and this raised a suspicion of Ucheria bancrofti. After the identification of Ucheria bancrofti, a night blood sample failed to show the growth of microfilariae. The patient was started in oral DEC. Uh, 100 mg TID for 21 days, there was a tremendous decrease in the swelling at the end of 4 weeks, and there was disappearance of the axillary lymphadenopathy at the end of 3 months. The patient was closely followed up for 2 years and showed no signs of, which are of, no signs of recurrence. So our topic for today is your Wuchereria Bancrofti and Brugia Malayi. Both of those are the two most common mosquito-borne causative agents of lymphatic filariasis. Wuchereria bancrofti is also known as your Bancroft's filarial worm, while your Brugia malayi, your Brugia malayi is also known as your Malayan filarial worm. So both can cause lymphedema, elephantiasis, acute fever, inflammation of the lymphatic system, Bronchial asthma condition, also known as your tropical pulmonary eosinophilia. The adult worms can, are creamy, white, long, and filiform in shape, while your male can go up to 2 to 4 cm, your female can go up to 8 to 10 cm. Your microfilariae, they measure around 270 to 290 micrometer, and they're enclosed in a hyaline sheath longer than the worm itself. So yung hyaline sheath, ito yung parang um, sac-like na ito, oh, makita niyo sac-like or parang bug-like, yan yung hyaline sheath. And they are longer than the worm itself. In fresh specimens, they appear minute and snake-like constantly moving around among the RBCs. So the microfilariae, when they are stained, the central axis shows a dark stained nuclei. And these nuclei are um, arranged in two or three rows and distinctly conspicuous. Your Brugge Malayi, the adult worms can go up to 13 to 23 millimeters, while your female adult worms can go to 43 to 55 millimeters. The microfilarily measures around 177 to 230 micrometers, and it's also enclosed in a hyaline sheath having a granular curvatures with secondary kings and two nuclei at the tip of the tail. See that, diba? Let's go to this picture. So your Brugia malayi, as you can see here, they have two nuclei at the tip of the tail. That is two nuclei at the tip of tail. While the Wuchereria bancrofti, you, if you go back to our case, the smear showed presence of thin, slenderless, colorless thread like larvae with blooded and tail, which is and the tail tip, which is free of nuclei, no? And tail tip niya is free of nuclei. That, yan, that is your Wuchereria bancrofti. So you can see your hyaline sheath is longer than the worm itself. Your loa loa, which will be discussed later, which the nucleus will be until at the tip of the tail. Diba? So again, your Wuchereria bancrofti, its tail is tip free of nuclei tail tip free of nuclei while your brugia malayi there is two nuclei at the tip of the tail and your loa loa the nuclei is until the tip of the tail 
So for your biological vectors, for your Wuchereria and Brugia, for your Wuchereria, that's your Colex species, Anophila species, Ada species, and your Mansonia species. While your, while your Brugia malayi is your Ada species and Mansonia species. Yeah. So, brief review, your Ada species are the, the one they can also carry your chikungunya, dengue, and your Zika virus. So, let's have a brief review of your lymphatic system. I know you're already done with your anatomy and physiology, but a quick review is your lymphatic system, they help maintain... Um, maintain fluid balance in your body so around your body diba, we have different lymph nodes and lymphatic organs and the, your lymphatic system collects excess fluid and particulate matter from tissues and they deposit them in the bloodstream then they help defend the body against infection by supplying your disease fighting cells called your lymphocytes so let's go to the life cycle the life cycle of which are a Bancrofty and your Brugia malayi is very similar. So first, during a blood meal, no, an infected mosquito introduces your third stage filarial larvae into your skin of the human host where they penetrate into the bite wound. Then they develop into adults um, and they commonly reside in your lymphatics. So, the adults produce a microfilari measuring 244 to 296 micrometer by 7.5 to 10 micrometers. And they migrate into lymph and your blood channels. So, that is why if a mosquito ingests, if a mosquito bites you, they also ingest the microfilari. No? Then, in your mosquito... If the after ingestion of the mosquito, the microfilaria loses their sheets and some of them work their way through the wall of the proventriculus and cardiac portion of the mosquito's meat gut and they reach the thoracic muscles. They develop in adults that commonly reside in the lymphatics. Then the, the microfilaria develop into first stage larvae and then subsequently into third stage infected infective larvae then uh, the third stage larvae migrate through the hemocyl to the mosquito's proboscis and can infect other human when the mosquito takes a blood meal i think this is a typo Okay, I'm sorry. I think that's a typo. Okay, so that is your life cycle. And now let's proceed. I can do I can explain it again, but since this is a video, you can just um backtrack it or something. So for the clinical spectrum of your lymphatic filariasis. We have um, the following. So first, let us um, let's learn about asymptomatic microfilaremia. So from the word no asymptomatic, so walang clinical manifestations of patients. But in reality, they already have lymphatic pathology and meron ang kidney damage. So since these people are asymptomatic, so wala masyadong interventions na nangyayari sa patients, these individuals, they serve as the main reservoir for the mosquito vectors which acquire microfilaria during their blood meals. And recent studies shows in animals show that there is direct evidence that infection with Brugia can selectively induce CD4 lymphocyte apoptosis which may contribute to the immune unresponsiveness to filariasis. So for your acute, next is we have acute dermatolymphagioadenitis. This is the most common acute manifestation of your lymphatic filariasis. Now, you, sa patient, there is localized pain, lymphadenitis, 
lymphitis or lymphagitis or cellula para siyang cellulitis na warm to touch then with or without systemic manifestations so repeated ADLA episodes ito yung responsible sa pagprogress ng lymphedema and elephantiasis din Next is your acute filaria lymphagitis. These are caused by adult worms that died spontaneously or commonly observed following treatment with DEC. Since namamatay yung, mag, yung mga worms, yung adult worms, so magkakaroon ng patient ang acute filaria lymphagitis. So your most common chronic manifestation, that is your lymphedema. And progression of this will lead to elephantiasis. So, your lower limb is commonly affected. No, they are usually localized in the lymph vessels of the lower extremities, like your inguinal lymph nodes, your mga epididymis ng males, labia ng females. So, these are the stages of your chronic lymphedema as proposed by Dreyer and et al. So, for stage 1, the swelling increases during the day but it's reversible once the patient lays flat in bed. Then your stage 2, the swelling is no longer reversible overnight, and your stage 3 shows the presence of shallow skin folds. Your stage 4, there are knobs present in the affected area. And your stage 5, the patient will already have deep skin folds. So, uh... A common chronic disease manifestation of your Bancroftian, Bancroftian filariasis is your hydrocele or chylocele. So, hydrocele uh, results in straw-colored hydrocele fluid and um, pag milky fluid appearance, ito yung tinatawag because of the lymph, this is what you call the chylocele. So, this is a surgical procedure uh, draining the fluid then your tropical pulmonary eosinophilia, no, we can see this on patients with occult um, filariasis. So, uh, because the microfilari causes less pathology, they are, but they are, uh, we can see tropical pulmonary eosinophilia. So, this is a classic example of occult filariasis in which clinical manifestations are not present. Because microfilaria are not found in your blood but in your tissues. So for the diagnosis, the blood samples are best collected at night time. Um, night time at 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. Wait lang. Okay, so for your diagnostic test, um, we have your wet smears or thick blood smears, and next is your knots method in cases of low intensity. Okay, so what is the modified knots technique? So we concentrate and stain the microfilariae by a procedure. So the principle is we lyse the RBC to make the microfilariae more visible. Then we examine as many as possible since mixed infections can occur. And then for the differentiation, we uh, measure the length and width and we learn the general characteristics. For the treatment, we have your DEC or that is your diethyl carbamazine citrate. This is both microfilaricidal and is active against the adult worm. And this is the DOC for lymphatic filariasis. So, our uh, very infamous ivermectin. This is also effective against a microfilaria of Futura bancrofti, but has no effect on the adult parasite. So, for lymphatic filariasis in children more than 18 months of age and adults, we do a 1-day or a 12-day treatment course of DEC, that is 6-MKD. 1-day treatment is generally as effective as a 12-day regimen. So for a tropical pulmonary eosinophilia, since 
the the microfilarays are found in the tissues a longer DEC treatment course of 14 to 21 days is generally recommended DEC is generally well tolerated by patients but side effect, side effects uh, are generally limited and depend on the number of microfilari in the blood the most common side effects are your dizziness nausea fever headache or pain in muscles or joints so for the epidemiology so ayan makita niyo sa picture yung blue that is your brugia malayi your wucheria bancrofti that is your pink then yung mga undefined green and yung pag wucheria and brugia malayi yan yung yellow so the principal vector of your uh, bancrofti filariasis is your anopheles minimus um variant flavi flavirostris so you're at this is Aedes. Aedes poecilius, they breed in water accumulated in the axils of abaca and banana, and they breed in rice fields. For your Malayan filariasis, the principal, principal vector is your Mansonia bonae, they breed in fresh water, while your Mansonia uniformis, they breed in rice fields. Bancrofti filariasis is seen in Camarinas Norte, Camarinas Sur, Albay, Sorsogon, Mindoro, Masbate, Romblon and Mountain Province in Bontoc. Your Bancrofti filariasis is seen in all provinces of Mindanao, including Tawi-Tawi and Basilan. So the WHO has a global program to eliminate lymphatic filariasis. So two major goals would be to interrupt transmission of the parasite via preventive chemotherapy and to provide care for those who suffer from the clinical manifestation of lymphatic filariasis through hygiene education programs. So thank you for listening.